Welcome back everyone. We're going to continue my series on supercharging. No, not just supercharging, electric supercharging my super slow Suzuki Swift. I think that's what I'm going to call it now. Um, so one of the most important components about electric supercharging your car will be the batteries or the cells you're going to use. Um, it is basically the biggest cost, though that does depend how much you paid for the supercharging, but really you've got your cost of the supercharger slash motor and you've got your cost of the cells. So we're going to talk about the three main kinds. There's, I mean, obviously you can use lead acid batteries, uh, which I wasn't going to talk about, but we'll cover that. Um, lead acid batteries are a horrible idea because they weigh billions of tons because they're made out of lead. They're actually quite expensive as well. Um, I would have legal issues of running uh, lead acid batteries in the boot. They have to be vented because of the fumes. You could do um, AMG gel cells and so on, but they all seem to be quite expensive and you'd need quite a lot of them to uh, achieve the voltage that I want. So lead acid, not going to go there because they weigh heaps and their voltage curve is pretty poor. Um, there again with AGM you may be able to do that but the cost is extremely expensive here to buy them. That's in part because you can't really buy them with relatively low um, amp hours. Uh, so we're going to be talking about like common cells that you can get off the internet basically from AliExpress. That's where I got all of these from. Why AliExpress? Uh, because I live in New Zealand and that's pretty much the only place you can get anything whatsoever from uh, yeah it's Ali or nothing. So this is a LiPo that you'd run with uh, like RC cars. This is a 5 cell. This is a LifePo 4. This is a Headway uh, 8 amp hour 38120 HP. I bought these because you cannot have a discussion about um, high current cells without talking about these and these are brand new to the market i hadn't seen them i discovered these if you like i'll i'll make that claim i discovered these these are ltos well i mean i didn't discover ltos but this particular cell size which is a six amp hour uh, 32145 so this is a video on why i chose to use these you can choose to use these or these but I would never do use these personally. Um, all are acceptable, but I wanted to do it on the premise that what I could get from AliExpress and what would be the actually ultimately the cheapest that will still be working in five years and has not caught my car on fire. So starting with LiPos, these have the highest energy density, so basically means you can get the most watt hours or power out of these uh, for their weight and size. So this would seem like the logical thing to use. The reason why I definitely am staying away from these uh, is because I have had bad experiences with these numerous times with LiPos. Uh, they, you, for a start, you're not supposed to leave them charged because they will puff up. So that doesn't help us in an electric supercharger. We'd like it basically to be charged all the time. They have all puffed up on me they do explode and catch on fire it's in my experience it's it's not like a made-up thing like you'll get electrocuted if you stick your finger in the plug well just don't stick your finger in the plug uh, i've had quite a lot of bad experiences that is not to say that you could not use them and um, you experience no problems whatsoever you would without a doubt with like no questions asked you have to run a hardcore bms if you're going to run these uh, this is certainly by far the cheapest way to do it, uh, but these have very short charge lives and due to the other things, and also because they don't like being hot or cold, um, I would, I'm would i just not even going to try this. It's just, it's just not worth it. You could try it if you're interested in like a drag car because it doesn't matter, um, life expectancy, cycles, uh, but if I want something that will still be going in five years I can basically make and leave and be happy also due to the legal system here personally I would if I was the inspector of my car because I'll need to get this legal I wouldn't allow this to be used however it's probably a case that the inspector would not know so whatever 
We then move on to LifePo 4. LifePo 4 is a, definitely a valid um, option in my opinion. It is way safer than the LiPo I just showed you. Not as safe as the LTO, but safe enough. Um, I bought these because everyone says high current uh, by light, life uh, headway 38 120 HPs, which are what these are. I've got some of these. Um, however, on the internet, these test relatively poorly, well, not relatively, they do test poorly. Um, and we really, really care about the internal resistance. That is because we're going to be pulling huge current, like 300 amps out of the cell. And not 300 amps burst, 300 amps the entire time. So a lot of this, this stuff, like this cell here, has got a high C rating, 60 C at 2.2 amps. But there's just no way these little tiny little cables are actually going to support that long term. Uh, so a lot of the stuff is like burst or short period of time. It's not actually going to deliver the, the power long term. Obviously, you can get thicker cables. This is not intended to be pulling hundreds of amps. Um, but like I said, uh, this is the go-to boy for high current LiPo 4s. And they're simple because they have screw terminals on each side. However, these do test poorly. They do not test at all what people believe. And I don't know if this is one of these things where they used to be amazing cells and they've got this reputation, but battery science has, has continued and these are no longer good or these are not, not uh, genuine. However, on that, these do test a milliamp hour rating and um, internal resistance over AC as per the ad in the specifications. Um, so generally speaking with LifePo 4, whatever the amp hour, which is eight, you can realistically pull three times that, which wouldn't be enough. Uh, there are theoretically some, some cells or, or pouch cells claiming more. I basically wouldn't believe it. That's just me. I would go for roughly three times because that's what you can pretty much count on because that is what the majority of the cells that are running uh, LifePo 4 say. So that leaves us with the LTO. The LTO is by far the safest. You can drill, literally drill through this. Um, it doesn't matter how hot or how cold, well, pretty much doesn't matter how hot or how, how cold this gets. Um, these have incredibly, particularly these ones, have incredibly low internal resistance. Uh, much lower than that, you can get the 16, uh, sorry, 66 160s, which are much bigger than this, but this actually has a lower internal resistance than most of those as well. So this is extremely good for delivering a reliable high current. And that's in part because we have decent sized terminals on each side, and this makes it really easy for the DIYer, like the headway, that you can just create battery bars, screw them all together. So I've gone with these because they are safe. They have extremely long cycles, like 20,000 times. Uh, they are, have incredibly low internal resistance, which means they're able to deliver high currents consistently and still be okay in five years time. These are also happen to be the cheapest way I could do it. Seriously, this is the cheapest way I could do it with these cells. These are actually pretty affordable. Yes, you could buy uh, bigger ones of these. You'll add more weight, obviously, to your car, which will slow it down. Um, same with the LifePo 4. You could buy much higher capacity ones of these to help offset the fact that they're not the greatest at delivering current. You can totally do that. But from a, for me, for a cost thing, the cheapest way that would work and not explode and catch on fire is to do it with these LTOs. So these are only 6 amp hour. The plan is to use 18 of these, which gives us about 50 volts at 6 amp hours, which will not give us an incredibly long runtime. But runtime is a different discussion. I can obviously add more of these in parallel to increase the runtime. However, due to costs, uh, we'll start with some of these 
and we can always add them later, we'll see how it goes. And we need to remember, ultimately all of the power comes from the alternator. So if you have a, tr a truckload of batteries being pulled behind your car, with a, an immensely powerful uh, amp hour rating, if you're still only able to charge them off your alternator at 20 amps, you'll never get to charge those batteries, so there's no point having a huge amp hour. And that is gonna be a real problem for me because the Swift has a, a 60 to 70 amp uh, alternator. Yes, I can upgrade the alternator. Well, theoretically I can, but what I'm saying is that once you then step that 30 amps up to up to the 50 volts you're putting out about 8 amps so that's not going to be a super high charge speed so there's not necessarily at this point there's no reason to have a huge capacity that you're never going to charge because you're only charging at a slow rate um, like i said we probably will add more capacity we probably will upgrade the alternator but let's just get something working before we get nothing working because it's going to cost two trillion dollars on that this is an expensive uh, task to do uh, so i'd love you to join my patreon support me and help this get this moving along i'll make everything available to you guys or girls um, and i'm hoping we can see a lot more of these in the future because electric supercharging is is fun it's cool it's easier in my opinion it's something i can pretty much do i couldn't turbo it myself because i would i don't i can't weld and do all of that stuff um, and the people have they've gone down the turbo route have ended up spending big big dollars i thought this would be fun all right boys and girls we'll see you on the next one bye bye